Hey guys, welcome to Practical Home Projects. As you guys are working on your electrical projects, you might have noticed that you could use either cable or conduit in different circumstances. And your local authorities might actually give you the flexibility to use whichever one makes the most sense to you. So to kind of simplify things, I'm gonna run through four scenarios in which you would use different ones. So a scenario where you'd use cable inside and one where you'd use cable outside, and then one where you'd use conduit inside and one where you'd use conduit outside. So before we get started, let's jump into a couple quick definitions. So this is a wire. It is a single conductor to take uh, electricity from one location to another location. And you'll see this one specifically is coated in a nylon that helps you have several wires bunched together without getting a short. So this next one is a cable. You'll see it's a bundle of three wires and it's covered with this PVC coating. And it's actually got a little piece of paper inside of it to help you cut it even more easily. The last one is a conduit. So this is a piece of rigid PVC. It essentially performs the same function as the flexible sheathing on the other one, except this one does not come with any wires in it. So you bring your own wires, usually THHN wires, to put inside. So the first scenario is using a cable inside. So you're going to use a Romex cable, that's the name brand, and this is pretty much the most common type of electrical wiring in your house. Most of your lights, your outlets, all of your appliances are gonna be run on something like this. It's pretty cheap, it's easy to work with. You just connect one end of your panel and one end of whatever uh, receptacle you need. It's relatively easy to work with. However, importantly, this cannot go outside. And it generally comes in convenient sizes, let's say 14, 12, 10 gauge wire. If you need anything much higher, then it becomes a little bit more difficult to work with as it's stiffer and you might wanna work think about stepping up to a conduit. So the next example is if you want to use a cable but outside. So this is a U-type cable. This is allowed to be used outside. You'll see it does not have the piece of paper in it. This is outside rated water and sunlight. I would not recommend using this in any high traffic areas but if you have a circuit that's going to have some wiring inside and some wiring outside this might be a good one to use or if it's just in a damp location in general but once again is not close to traffic it's probably a good choice to use. So for example, when we were installing electricity in our shed, we decided to use an exterior conduit. So you can see we used a liquid watertight flexible conduit. So this is both UV resistant and waterproof, of course. And then we filled it with THHN type wires. Uh, this is a great choice. We used flexible conduit because we wanted to be able to make some gentle bends. Rigid conduit would have worked just as well. However, you'd have to glue each of those seams in. I do not recommend using metallic conduit as a homeowner just because the tools are expensive and a pain to use. So your setup for your conduit run is going to be a little bit more expensive than it would be for just a cable run because of all the extra devices. Um, don't forget that you'll need to install a couple of these pull through boxes. So when you're doing your initial uh, pulling those wires through, the friction around those turns is going to add up very quickly. So actually by code you have to have a pull through box once for every 360 degrees of cumulative turns. Uh, I actually recommend having one about every 180 degrees of cumulative turns. So that's after every two 90 degree turns, I would probably put one of these boxes. So depending on what type of conduit you're using, you will have different burial depths. So for example, if you were using metallic conduit, it only needs to be buried about 12 inches. If you're using PVC rigid conduit or flexible conduit like this one, it needs to be buried up to about 18 inches deep. And then if you're using that UFB type cable we were showing earlier, it needs to be buried about 24 inches deep. Of course, check your local code to see if they require something different. So the last scenario is if you want to use conduit but indoors. This is probably the least common scenario. Um, you would use something like this. This is non-metallic tubing. And it essentially, once again, performs the same function as that coating on the wires. This is not rated for any outdoor use. I would use this in probably two different scenarios. One, if you have really, really high current wires. For example, we're using this for an outdoor electric car charging station, and it'd just be a pain to use cables of that large thickness, so we're using the conduit. The other one would be if you expect in the future to ever have to remove the wires. This way, if the cable is running from point A to point B, you can just pull it through without having to cut into your drywall at all. So you might find this type of pipe at your local hardware store. It's pretty much made of the same thing. It's also PVC. However, do not use this for any electrical projects. This is a plumbing pipe. It'll be very confusing and unprofessional for your local plumber when he finds out that his uh, pipe has electrical wires inside. I hope running through these different scenarios kind of helped outline the differences between conduit and cable and what might be best for your big electrical projects. 
If you guys have any questions or comments or if you want to share your experiences, please put those in the comment section down below. And then of course like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. Thanks guys.